For decades, scientists worldwide have dreamed of producing energy using fusion. It emits no harmful greenhouse gases, produces no hazardous waste or radiation, and the fuel, it can be extracted from seawater. In order to solve the puzzle of this clean and practically inexhaustible source of energy, researchers are looking to the stars. Our Sun is a giant power plant that produces energy by fusing atomic nuclei together and in the process releasing the awesome power contained within the atomic nucleus. The dream of producing viable fusion energy here on Earth has previously been just that a dream. But now, a strengthened collaboration between researchers and industry from 16 EU countries is contributing to the worldwide efforts to pave the way for clean and cheap fusion energy. Atomic nuclei contain binding energy that can be released either by fusing the atomic nuclei together this is called fusion, or by splitting them, which we call fission. In a conventional nuclear power station based on fission, heavy atomic nuclei are split into smaller parts, so they are all fission power plants. This requires nuclear reactors, which use uranium, thorium, or other heavy, rare, and unfortunately also hazardous radioactive elements. Fission produces hazardous nuclear waste, and this creates a number of challenges. There are environmental problems, as the waste will have to be stored for thousands of years, and the enriched uranium from nuclear power plants can be used for nuclear weapons. So there is a good reason to research new, safe, and abundant forms of energy. The fuel in a fusion reactor consists of two variants, of the hydrogen atom, deuterium and tritium. Deuterium is found abundantly in nature. It can be extracted with relative ease from ordinary seawater. Tritium, however, is extremely rare on Earth. Instead of extracting tritium from natural resources, it is produced, or bred, as a byproduct in the fusion fuel cycle. By fusing the atomic nuclei together, we do not create the hazardous waste associated with fission reactors of conventional power plants. Inspired by this, scientists are delving deep into the physics, the physics of the sun. The sun, like all stars, is a giant ball of glowing gas. It is so massive that the pressure towards the sun's interior makes the material in the center extremely dense and hot. The core of the sun is approximately 15 million degrees, and matter there is so dense that just a single liter of the sun's interior weighs more than 100 kilograms. This extreme heat and density means that the material at the center of the sun is completely ionized. That is to say, that the atoms are split into electrons and atomic nuclei, and in this state, the matter is called plasma. In this extremely hot and dense plasma, the hydrogen nuclei begin to fuse together. This creates lots of energy, huge amounts of energy, fusion energy. In a fusion reactor, we're trying to mimic what is happening in the sun. So in a way, our job is to ignite a little star here on Earth. The dream of producing fusion energy here on Earth has a long history. The basic theory behind the fusion of atomic nuclei was formulated back in the 1920s and 30s. The first fusion experiments took place in physics laboratories in several industrialized countries in the 1940s, and the first controlled fusion experiment took place in the United States in 1958. In 1968, the next big breakthrough was made in the Soviet Union. Here, the researchers managed to maintain such extremely high temperatures that plasma could form and be confined in a magnetic field long enough for fusion to take place. However, the dream of fusion energy was still out of reach. It still required much more energy to initiate the fusion processes, 
than what the processes yielded. But that is what we're now working to solve by developing new advanced technology and research into fusion. Through the European Research Fund, the European Cooperation in Science and Technology, or COST, a consortium of researchers from 16 countries has been created, which aims to strengthen and develop fusion research in Europe. Bringing together experts from nuclear and atomic physics, plasma physics and high-intensity lasers, hydrodynamics, computational physics, even from astrophysics, is essential for further development and perfection of fusion technology. In the research consortium MP1208, we focus on a particular fusion technology called inertial confinement fusion, or ICF. The experiments seen here were carried out at the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory in California. But in Europe, these will primarily take place at the Laser Megajoule, the LMJ, and the Petawatt Aquitaine Laser, Petal, together LMJ Petal, which are key French national research facilities situated in Bordeaux. In order to understand what is happening in ICF, we need to go all the way into the atomic nuclei. An ordinary hydrogen atom has one proton in the nucleus and one electron orbiting the nucleus. It's very difficult to get ordinary hydrogen to fuse in laboratories, as opposed to the sun, which has its enormous mass to push things together. Instead of using hydrogen in fusion here on Earth, we need to get a hold of two heavier variants or isotopes of hydrogen called deuterium and tritium. In a laboratory, these two isotopes fuse 100 times more efficiently than ordinary hydrogen nuclei. Deuterium has an additional neutron in its nucleus and is therefore heavier than ordinary hydrogen. Tritium has two additional neutrons in its nucleus and is thus even heavier. It's super heavy hydrogen. In ICF, we use small pellets containing these two heavy hydrogen isotopes. The hydrogen pellets are injected into a vacuum chamber and by bombarding the pellet with very, very powerful laser beams from all angles, it is compressed by the laser field. In this way, an incredibly powerful shock wave causes the hydrogen pellet to implode and an extremely hot and dense plasma is formed. The deuterium and tritium nuclei now begin to fuse into helium, which also releases a free neutron. For a brief moment, the small hydrogen pellet lights up as a microstar, producing lots of energy. It is the extreme temperatures, matter density and concentration of energy that initiates the fusion. To model the burning plasma in the pellet, scientists have started using supercomputer simulation tools from astrophysics. Within these models, they solve billions of differential equations to develop our understanding of how the shock waves create the plasma and how the fusion processes happen in detail. The ultimate goal is to create self-sustaining fusion plasma that releases more energy than the energy required to initiate the process. Another fusion technology is magnetic confinement fusion, also called MCF. Now the reactor confines the fusion plasma within powerful magnetic fields enclosed in a toroidal chamber called a tokamak. Just as in ICF, the fuel in MCF is comprised of a blend of deuterium and tritium, and temperatures reach more than 100 million degrees in both cases. But in MCF, the plasma is heated not by high-power lasers, but rather using microwaves and strong electric currents in the reactor core. Still, in two respects, the physics of ICF and MCF are vastly different. The plasma density of the igniting plasma in MCF is lower than the density in ICF by a factor of 10 billion. Also, the required confinement time in MCF is 1 billion times longer than the ICF confinement time. 
So MCF is truly a very different approach to achieving nuclear fusion conditions. In the plasma, the free nuclei have electric charge. They can be held firmly in place by the powerful magnetic field within the reactor, long enough to initiate the fusion process. The helium nucleus produced in the fusion process also has electric charge and can therefore be held in place in the plasma by that powerful magnetic field. However, 80% of the energy is released as kinetic energy carried by a neutron. This neutron does not have electric charge and it is electrically neutral and therefore not affected by the magnetic field. The neutron escapes from the plasma and is absorbed by the surrounding wall. Here, its energy is converted into heat, which in turn can be used to produce steam, to drive turbines, generators, to produce electricity, and lots of it. Future advanced MCF experiments will be conducted at ITA in France. The ITA Tokamak reactor is currently under construction and will be situated in Carrache. There have already been several breakthroughs in research on both ICF and MCF. In some cases, fusion reactions have been sustained for long enough to approach the important point of break-even, even if only for a few seconds. That is to say, we have been close to extracting the same amount of energy as we used to initiate the process. But there is still some way to go before we can build viable fusion power plants that can replace the old nuclear power plants and produce cheap and clean electricity in unlimited amounts. The potential of this fusion research is enormous. Energy resources like coal and oil pollute our atmosphere with carbon dioxide. There is nothing to suggest that traditional nuclear power nor cleaner alternatives such as solar and wind can adequately meet our future demands for energy. But if the research team from the 16 countries in the COST consortium manage to harness this power of fusion as a viable energy source, it will be a breakthrough of historic proportions. We will have a new, non-polluting and almost inexhaustible energy supply that will safely meet our energy needs long into the future. Thank you.